I'm going to show you how to crochet this cute little mug rug that you use sort of like a coaster for your coffee mug so stay tuned and I'll show you how to make it okay I am back yes I did take a short little break from making videos I'm finishing up some courses that I'm taking it doesn't matter if you have 20 or 30 years of experience under your belt and a certain subject people want you to have that little piece of paper hanging on your wall so I'm going for another certification here also, we got hit with 15 inches of snow and ice. That noise in the background, that is the snow melting from my roof and dripping down and hitting my window. So please ignore that. I've been getting lots of requests for fast and easy gift ideas because we're getting closer to Christmas and mug rugs are perfect for that. I sell them in my shop on my website, uh, thesoutherngirlcan.com and you click on the shop tab and it will show you everything that I have available. I'm sorry, usually when I list something, it sells like that. I'm trying to keep things stocked. Um, four for $10. So if you want to make these and sell at craft fairs, that's what I recommend you to sell them for. For this, you are going to need peaches and cream or whatever brand you like. A four-ply worsted weight cotton yarn, a size five millimeter hook, and a pair of scissors. Also a yarn needle to sew in your ends. So what we're going to do is get our yarn onto our hook by making a slip knot awesome band by the way wrap it around your fingers tuck it in just like that now i'm not going to be going incredibly slow with this because i do have plenty of crochet videos aimed for beginners that i will link to that playlist right up here this is more like if you already have a basic grip of what you're doing now we're going to make a chain of 19. so one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And I'm just looking at all this glitter paint and everything I have all over my hands. I've been making stuff all day. So now we're going to go back across this chain with single crochets. And we're not going to start in this first stitch here. We're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So not this one, but this one. Just go into that second chain and make a single crochet like that and single crochet all the way across for a total of 18. So again, you put your hook in, pull it through, you have two loops and pull it through those two. See, that's three and four and five that's basically all that you're doing you're just making a single crochet rectangle so i'm going to finish this all the way across 18 single crochets until we get to the end this last stitch here when i get there i'm going to chain one flip my work over and start again with 18 single crochets all the way across so i'm going to pause and i'll be right back all right so here we go this is my first pass of 18 single crochet and I'm now at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one, flip her around, flip it. Oh Lord. Flip it while I said I was. Give me a minute. <laughs> flip it around and now we're going to make single crochets all the way back across, starting in this first little stitch right here. So insert your hook into that first stitch, pull up. Now you have two loops, yarn over, and pull through two and now you're just going to work all the way back across making single crochets yes i have spanish moss on my table here where i was making some other things and it is sticking to my yarn so and i'm kind of in the middle of making that so i'm not really going to clean everything up right now and i'm going to leave this glitter and stuff paint on my hands until i'm through with that project but anyway you just single crochet all the way back across and then when you get to your last stitch, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to chain one, flip it over, and then work your single crochets all the way back across. Now, however many rows you want to make is up to you. You could make this into a perfect square, or you can make it more into a rectangle. I like mine to be a rectangle. I think it looks more like a rug that way. Coasters are square. Mug rugs are more of a rectangle. 
But anyway, you keep working on yours and I'm going to work on mine. And then when we come back, I'll show you how to finish it off. And then I'll show you how to make some little tassels to go on the end. Alrighty, I'm done with this and I have made 12 rows. Like I said, you can make as many or as few as you like. This is just what I do. And as you can see, this is about how much yarn I have left in this little ball. So you're probably, because usually I get mine like on the big cones. Um, with these small ones, the way it looks, you're probably going to get two, maybe two and a half mug rugs out of one of these. So now that we're done, we're just going to cut our yarn and finish this off. And to finish things off, I just chain one and pull it through. Just like that. So now we're going to sew in the end. This is going to be the wrong side of our project. Just going to thread your needle here. Some people say yarn your needle. I don't know why I can't stand that. <laughs> I thread my needle. And yes, this needle is absolutely monstrous and too big for my stitches. But I can't find my smaller ones right now. Because during the night, I did hear a ruckus. And it looked to me like my little black cat that y'all seen on previous videos. My little black cat went on a rampage last night and knocked crafting supplies everywhere. So I'm missing a pair of scissors and two of my yarn needles. Anyway, you gotta love them. Let's trim that off. Okay, and now this is what we have so now I'm going to put some tassels on here to make it look more like a rug. And to do that, I'm just going to cut a piece of yarn, I don't know, six inches, and just make a loop with it like that. And then I'm going to, let's see, what was the front again? Yeah, that's the back. This is the front. Let's start here on the corner. I'm just going to put my hook up through that corner and holding my yarn like this, just kind of put it over that hook. Kind of hold it tightly with your other fingers here so it doesn't slip off and just try to work it through that stitch. Yes, there are probably easier ways to do it. This is how I do it. Now you have your loop here and your two pieces here. Just stick them through that loop and pull it tight just like that. And that's what it looks like. Ugh, this darn stuff, it gets everywhere. It's all over the floor, it's all over me. <laughs> and that's what it should look like. And I'm just going to do that all the way down the shorter sides here, and then it'll be done. Now, when you're using cotton yarn, if you make dishcloths and whatnot, you probably already know what I'm talking about. When you're using cotton yarn, the colors will fade if you wash them, or like if they get wet, and a wet and dry, wet and dry, eventually the colors will fade. Sometimes it'll fade just after one washing. You need to set the colors in your yarn before you really make anything to sell. So, once you have sell or give, <laughs> so once you've made something out of cotton, what you can do is just get like a plastic bin, put two cups of really hot water in it, put one tablespoon of white vinegar, one tablespoon of Epsom salt, stir that up, make sure the Epsom salt is fully dissolved. Just stir all that up and put your finished items in it and let that soak for about 30 minutes. And then once the 30 minutes is up, you take them out of that and give them a good rinse in some cool water. Lay them flat to dry. If you want to block it, block it. But just let it flat to dry. And then it should be good to go from there on out as far as washing and usage and your colors stand in place. So I hope that you enjoyed this easy little tutorial. If you would, please, please give me a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Check me out on other forms of social media. I'll have the links to all of those in the description box down below. And I hope to see y'all next time. Bye-bye.